Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9, and ignore the flicker, but this is an old mid-90s LCD terminal. It's a shame it's not gas plasma, but I have a gas plasma laptop that works, so all is not lost. Its official name is a PV-DT51-5193. And the specs for running it are that 9600 board, like pretty standard um, terminal output, which is good to know. So, I have built a nice little PowerShell script that um, has the nice effect of uh, basically giving a demonstration of it. So we can run our script and boom! Aperture science. And I've even got the script responding to the touch screen. I have to be quick doing this though because I haven't put it in a loop. And no, it was not quick enough. There we go. And then we have a quote from Gladys. Which is pretty cool. So, we'll go over to the workbench and we'll give you the teardown now. To be honest, I was surprised when this turned out to be a serial terminal. But the overall thing is, on both sides we've got these screw holes, and on this side we have a contrast knob, and then there's basically diddly squit on all the other sides. But yeah, uh, touch screen, which is also part of the serial terminal, hence I was able to get PowerShell to interact with it. Why PowerShell? Because, well, my uh, gaming PC runs Windows and... It was just convenient to write a PowerShell script to do it. I do PowerShell as part of my job, so I'm pretty used to it. So, we have uh, done some modifications to actually make this functional. It runs on both 12 volts and 5 volts. We have a um, power supply we pulled from... I think it was pulled from an old Cisco switch. I don't remember. And because we like living life dangerously, danger, exposed 240 volts. And then we have the um, RS-232 connector. I originally put on one of these connectors and uh, realised my mistake when I um, tried to uh, use it. <laughs> yeah, I did a derp. Uh, I'm good at doing derps. Very good. Too good. I should build it a custom cable that actually um, connects to the uh, confuser. Because I never get the RX and TX right to get them working with null modem cables. So we take out the um, screws which were pulled out of god knows what I took apart years ago. And the technology this actually runs on is older than the 90s. I might actually take a dump of the ROM and um, put it up on um, on the in a link to it or whatever in the description. I'll figure something out. Maybe I'll, yeah, I could do actually put it up on the EV blog actually, just so I can host the um, zip file of the EEPROM. So we remove our nice custom cut um, panel that was um, cut with only the highest high tech in um, tin snipping technology. Seriously, these are quicker than using the Dremel, so if you can use these, use these. So pop the back off, and we have our custom wiring job. The serial goes through to this, and the cable goes through to the main board. But the thing I like about this is, well, everything. <laughs> so... We have three main modules that this connects down and goes into this board, connects to this board, and then this connects to everything else, because guess what? It's the brain. So we'll grab a convenient pointer that's just kind of chilling at the side here, and we have the CFL backlight. When this CFL dies, I will probably end up replacing it with um, LEDs, because why not? And it actually takes power directly from it, 12 volt. This is basically what the 12 volt drives, and the 12 volt drives this. Although, to be honest, 5 volt regulator, 7805. Yeah, this could have been designed to just 
run straight off the 5 volts. That would have been made more sense. But this is our touchscreen interface um, serial board. Once again, RS232 output that goes into this connector here. This one does the um, communications from the terminal as a whole to the um, output port. That's uh, out of camera sight. And so this uses a little uh, Motorola microcontroller, which is a MC6AHC7... Is that O? I've never seen O in a part number before. 5J2CP. And then this will be referring to a firmware version on it. So yeah, this is quite simple. Got some jumpers on it. Um, by the way, good luck finding anything about this thing online. There is diddly squit. Because I've tried. <coughs> this is the 5 volt input into the board. I believe this would actually be a keyboard connector here. But I have not tested it. It's a 5 pin input, so probably PS2. So... Maybe something to try at a later date, then I could put a PS2 port on the back, which would make this terminal a whole lot more useful if I could get it to type back. Rather than the uh, random characters you get when you just touch the screen. This is the connector to the LCD. This little connector goes to the um, contrast control. We got we got quite a lot of um, gals on here, which are basically just, you know, basically saves having to populate it with loads of seven four logic. Basically, we got an EEPROM here that we can't actually see what size it is, uh, which isn't the best. DEK printing da, 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 X five zero A B zero two H dash C six E zero. And here we have something very special. It is none other than a Z80, or as you Yanks love to call it, a Z80 CPU. Manufactured in the year 1994. 32 week. And we've got 32 megahertz crystal here. Now, I'm not quite sure why 32 megahertz, but... 100%, but I suspect... It's this high pretty much because of the board rate. Because if you um, do the divisions down, uh, uh, my calculator's buried. If we do the divisions down, oh, my calculator's not plugged in. Never mind. <laughs> I got a calculator over here and he is not plugged in. So he, yeah, I'm not wheeling over to get one because I'm lazy. We got... Um, so raw Z80, we got the ROM. I'm not actually sure where the RAM is on this. We got a 24C02E EEPROM, which will no doubt be basically holding the configuration of the device. It's a shame this is not socketed because um, to um, dump the uh, data from that will require desoldering it, and I'm not willing to do that. But I'm actually not sure where the RAM is because a lot of this, it's all like logic chips. Aside from like these ones, which I'm not sure what these are. Although there is a dash 10, so that potentially hints at this being memory and there's a dash 70 here. So we've potentially got memory here and here. I'm not sure what this um, specs chip does as SP23. 8 ACS. You see, if I was organised, I'd have pre-looked um, up these uh, connectors. Interestingly, you might notice this. You've got footprints on these for standard DB25 and um, DB... Um, whatever the um, joystick port is called. <coughs> LCD panel connects here. So, yeah, standard... And yeah, that's it. Most of it is like programmable logic and um, maybe memory. <laughs> I was wrong in the last video. I thought I thought the chips I thought were also uh, ROMs or RAM of sort <laughs> to be. Um... Yeah, they turned out to be I/O chips when I looked up the data sheet. Ah, oh, Simon, you stupid idiot. 
Oh well, live and learn. And then the rest of these are basically just your standard 7-4 logic shenanigans. But most of it's in the gals. Which once again, yeah. Um, I'm not actually sure how you extract data from gal chips. Maybe one day I'll figure it out. I probably will figure it out eventually, but I don't know the solution now. I've probably already got the tools to do it. I just don't know how to do it. But yeah, that is the serial terminal. And you look at how it's held together, hot snot and sticky things and terminal blocks, which the terminal block was not added by me. That is not, that looks like one of my additions, but it's not. And then of course, because expensive equipment, of course we've got Allen key screws in there because why wouldn't we? Uh, anyway. That is pretty much the serial terminal, the LCD serial terminal that I am glad to have in operation. And I will definitely um, try connecting a PS2 device to this at some point. Uh, we've got another terminal video coming up because we've got the Minitel to cover. And we'll be basically using the same script to demo it, but edited through work with the Minitel. Because there's a few um, differences in like board rate and all that fun jazz. I'll also show you how to um, initialise it to um, receive the data properly from the serial port. So yeah, that is uh, the neighbourhood friendly um, serial terminal that you can hook up to a Windows uh, 10 machine, run a PowerShell script and display um, uh, ASCII art from Portal. And where did I get this beautiful piece of tech? Well, at the uni we bin, of course, because I acquired so much good good stuff from that bin. I miss it. I must, I must, because the lockdowns are all dropping off, I must visit that wee bin at some point soon. And hopefully there'll be some good stuff in there waiting for me. Thanks for watching.